You what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 20 online game. Today we have the Minnesota Vikings as our feature team and our feature player is Harrison Smith. We are going to be trying to get Harry the Hitman's X Factor ability of reinforcement activated. At the time I had actually recorded this first game you guys are about to see against the Seahawks. I hadn't even done the Derwin James reinforcement video. It was really just Derwin or Harrison whichever player we got activated I would show first but the Vikings are a pretty fun team to use even though we already did the Derwin video. I want to show you guys some Vikings gameplay. There are actually three Three games in this video that's part of the reason why it is so long so yeah the Vikings they have a couple of really fun players to use on offense you got obviously Adam Thielen with the x-factor ability of double me and he has slot apprentice Stefan Diggs has a superstar ability of jukebox so he should be pretty fun to use in short yardage situations Hill was not one of the guys we're trying to show off but he gets a pretty nifty kick return anyways it looked like my opponent tried to pooch and that didn't work out for him and then they have Dalvin Cook at the running back position Dalvin Cook is definitely poised to have himself a pretty big season in the third year of his career you guys remember how great he was in his rookie season before he tore his ACL now you know those ACL injuries usually take somewhere between you know 12 to 18 months to recover from so hopefully Dalvin is back in tip-top form and Kyle Rudolph is gonna pick up Dalvin's messy situation there we fumble the ball and Rudolph gets the recovery and the touchdown that definitely pissed off my opponent so really quick if you guys are about to do your fantasy football draft you know a couple days before the season starts which I'm about to do i actually have two drafts in the next two days i gotta do or if you guys are trying to get ready for you know daily fantasy sports season you know make those lineups every sunday for dfs situations for football or even basketball or baseball you guys can check out dfsarmy.com they have all the best expert analysis on you know how to make some money off of these fantasy football drafts or you know, you guys are doing especially daily fantasy sports so if you guys want to sign up for a membership you definitely can and try to you know they definitely got the smart guys that do make the money themselves and they're willing to offer their tips to everybody else so you guys want to you know enjoy dfs army's friend the wealth that link will be in the description below as we have a fourth down and five and tyler lockett is not going to get the first down i don't know exactly what my opponent thought he was doing there or what he thought he was doing on this defensive play i believe shaquille griffin tried to press adam thielen at the line of scrimmage and that didn't quite work out for him. I think we actually had Stefan Diggs as well, but Thielen was long gone with that one. So a very curious fourth down decision, throwing a three-yard curl route doesn't work, and then he gives it the touchdown. So not a great sequence as Russell Wilson on the run and looking for David Moore, but that'll be swatted beautifully by Trey Waynes. This Vikings secondary, always a work in progress, and it always feels like Trey Waynes is one of those pieces you're waiting for him to really break out. Obviously, they have Xavier Rhodes, who has been a standout. They actually lost Anderson Sunday or was it Andrew Sandejo? Either way, that dude, he was a pretty decent safety to pair up with Harrison Smith. And unfortunately, the Vikings lost him now. So we'll see how they replace him and, you know, how that secondary looks. They do have, obviously, Harrison Smith. Unfortunately, there, um, we used Harrison and we blew a coverage on that tight end route. I didn't think he would have the time to throw that ball when we sent the blitz. But um, the Seahawks offensive line did their job. And because of that, we give up the long touchdown and the game is tied right back up right before the two-minute warning. We're looking to go on the bubble to Adam Thielen. Trying to get away from Bobby Wagner, who's really just starting to take over this game. He absolutely had his fingerprints all over that drive. And on fourth down and four, we punt the ball. Normally, a situation we would go for there. But since our main objective here is to get Harrison Smith in the zone, we are going to punt the ball, play some defense, and see if Harry the Hitman can do his thing. To get reinforcement, if you guys remember, we need to get either three tackles for losses or forced incompletions. And if we get an interception with Harrison, he's automatically in the zone. So far, we haven't done a jack with this thing and to be completely honest with you guys um this Seahawks game Harrison will actually not be getting in the zone so that's why that's part of the reason why there are three Vikings games in here because it was quite the struggle to get Harrison in the zone as we go to Diggs that'll be tipped and on the dive intercepted by McDougal I believe that's Bradley McDougal the former Buccaneer with the interception yes it is and Unfortunately, we give the ball right back to my opponent. This Seahawks team is officially no longer the Legion of Boom. Everybody from the Legion of Boom now gone now that Earl Thomas has left. Sherman on the Niners. Cam Chancellor retired. And Brandon Browner, who knows where he is, or Deshaun Shedd. As that'll be a handoff to Chris Carson. A decent game. Should put the Seahawks in field goal range. But puts the Seahawks out of timeouts. And after that big run stuff in the middle by Linvod Joseph with that visor. Oh, the Seahawks nearly get intercepted on the spike attempt. That was a... 
spike that nearly went absolutely wrong. Instead, Jason Myers is able to step on the field. The former Jet is able to get the field goal up and good. Of course, the Seahawks had Sebastian Janikowski last year, but he pretty much retired. Once again, a squib kick does not quite work out for my opponent, and now we actually have a decent chance of trying to take the heave into the end zone on the final play of the first half. That's Stefan Diggs, who's going to get away, and Stefan Diggs with no time left in the first half lets the lead change one more time. This has been quite the windshield wiper game and we still have a whole half of football to go just not great defense there by my opponent quite frankly i think he came out on a cover two and safety played inside stefan diggs just need the right pass from kirk cousins which we did and we just got away from bradley McDougal. so i don't know what in the world he did there i'll obviously take it we do get ball to start the second half as kirk cousins with a pretty fine performance so far six for seven oh but he loses the ball it's bobby wagner and bobby wagner is four tackle but every single one of them has been threatening to force a fumble. He finally forces one. And for the second time in this game, my opponent does not get a fumble recovery. And for the second time, he pauses in absolute frustration. Dalvin Cook muffed that one and nearly muffed it to the Seahawks. Thankfully, we're able to get it back as third down and 12. We dump it down to uh, threat. Treadwell there? Either way. Man, Laquan Treadwell definitely has been someone the Vikings are just begging to make that next step. They have the one, they have digs of Treadwell was worthy of any sort of value like his first round draft pick selection was. You know, the Vikings would be that much more dangerous as Rashad Penny seeing the field a couple of times and not really seeing many rushing lanes. Third down and 10, he is going to get the screen pass and look at the blocks and lining for the Seahawks. And Penny going to take it to the 40-yard line, big first down. Russell Wilson, not a bad performance in this first half, just like Cousins. Not throwing the ball a lot, but when he does, he's been pretty effective. Like here to David Moore to the 43-yard line goes Wilson. Now with that huge contract Russell Wilson has, he is the face of the franchise and... He needs to perform to make that contract worth it. Nothing Russell Wilson can do when Harrison Smith absolutely pops Rashad Penny. And on the return, it's Anthony Barr completely out of stamina. And Barr is going to be tackled just short of the end zone because he completely ran out of that stamina bar. As you guys saw, and Bobby Wagner is going to get a face mask penalty. That might explain why he's been getting so many big hits on us because he has his tackling on his aggressive and or his strip ball. He hasn't taken it off, it looks like, because Wagner just decolletes Adam Thielen on that stretch attempt as Dalvin Cook spinning. But once again, we are just short of the end zone. Third down and goal. It's going to be a pitch to Dalvin, but multiple Seahawks in the area, including Kendricks and, of course, Bobby Wagner. We actually take the field goal here. And, yeah, considering where we started the drive and where we had third down and goal at the one, that was... A W for him. And an unfortunate break. Because that is the third fumble in this game. And the third one that we recovered. So I'll definitely take it. Harrison unfortunately is not going to be in the zone. Even though we did force a fumble on that play. You'd think that would activate reinforcement. Not quite. As DJ Metcalf trying to get away from Xavier Rhodes. And I tried to strafe and swat that ball. I wasn't even going to go for the pick. Unfortunately I just got one of those statue animations. That you seem to get this year. When you try to strafe up for a football. And Metcalf's going to get the catch. And Metcalf's definitely not going to get down. And that's going to bring up a third down and 10 out the two minute warning. We're going to go cover for defense. Very conservative. Make sure we don't give up anything over the top. But how about this? In the corner, it's Moore. And Moore has got the Seahawks within now three points after the Jason Meyer P. AT. The Seahawks electing the kick deep with all three of their timeouts left. They're going to rely on Bobby Wagner and the defense to get a stop and get the ball back for Russell Wilson to come up with one of his signature clutch drives. But can that defense get a stop? Dalvin Cook, decent gain. Second down and six. And we are going five wide. Kirk Cousins looking and finding Kyle Rudolph for a major first down with two a lot of clock. The game not over just yet. We still do need one more first down to officially solidify the game. That was a dangerous dive. I tried to give myself up there. Nearly fumbled the ball. Second down and five. Dalvin Cook cannot get away from Wagner. And here we go. Third down to keep the Seahawks dream alive. We're going on the RPO to Stefan Diggs. Oh, Stefan Diggs puts a man to the ground and buries the Seahawks. Stefan Diggs. He has the jukebox superstar ability. But you would think he had an arm bar with the way he mauled his way into the end zone. And a quick rage quit from the opponent. So... You guys can see, even though we did not get any X-Factors going, why I wanted to show you guys that game. It was a pretty entertaining game, man. So, you know, while we're showing all these Vikings games, why not do that? So, as we have now the Minnesota Vikings going against the New England Patriots, we are once again working on the hair 
Preston Smith, X-Factor ability. We force another fumble with Harry to hit, man. But that's not even going to count for the X-Factor counter at all. It wasn't even a tackle for a loss. So even though we pretty much just ruined that man's career, you know, just does absolutely nothing for us. So, yeah. I'm going to show you guys pieces of this game. The reason why I'm showing you guys p any pieces of this game, because there were a, a few pretty cool plays that I want to show you guys. First of all, you know, that fumble by Harrison Smith. As you guys can see, Harrison Smith with that Enforcer Superstar ability. Enforcer is definitely one of my favorite defensive um, superstar abilities because it pretty much guarantees you a hit stick. And not just a hit stick, but just... A bone crushing hit stick. You've seen some of the hits Harrison has put on in these games. So, you know, Enforcer is really a fun one, as you see. Adam Thielen. At this point now, now that I'm playing this game, I tried to focus a bit more on getting Thielen his double me X Factor ability. But unfortunately, my opponents weren't giving me the best opportunities to do it. And I just wasn't, you know, throwing the ball at the right time, I suppose. That had a chance to be one out of three for double me, but. I guess I threw that one 19 or 20 yards in the air. D1 does get the touchdown. Like it was one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker. Had to throw that one as soon as possible, seeing the mismatch. And using that wide receiver apprentice to put Adam Thielen on a corner route there. That wasn't his original play. It's just, you know, with that apprentice ability, I was able to put him on whatever I wanted to. That was definitely big as we are going to just fly in James White. Harrison, just look at the swagger he's walking around with. Just like nothing happened, even though he almost ended a man's career. Third down and three, Tom Brady was... 25 seconds left in the first half over the head of Anthony Barr but thankfully Trey Wayne's able to swat the ball away from Philip Dorsett and that was Madden 19 that was a pick 100% but Madden 20 can't get those Superman animations as you know we're just gonna run the ball here conservatively before the end of the first half pretty cool but taking our 10 to 3 lead as we go on an end of round 2 Stefan Diggs and Stefan Diggs trying to create another Minneapolis miracle there goes Diggs a time Touchdown on the reverse pitch. You guys saw how that absolutely fooled my opponent. Even after we faked the pitch and went to digs, he still tried to user the pitch to Dalvin Cook. So that was a pretty nifty play call. I was surprised that one worked out. And of course, Stefan Diggs with that jukebox. So we didn't have jukebox. We didn't score a touchdown there. So that was pretty cool. And once again, a linebacker matchup one-on-one -on -one with Adam Thielen. That's as easy as you like it. Adam Thielen into the end zone for his second touchdown. That does nothing for double me. Not like it matters at this point because my opponent quits the game. So let's go into game three of the video. And, you know, slight spoiler alert. I'm sure you see the thumbnail. But this is the game where we finally get Harry to hit, man, his enforcer. X Factor ability. I was so hard on this one, man. I'm telling you, if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan and you do not like this video, especially if you made it this far, it's pretty much criminal, all right? Because I, I worked for you guys, man. I really did. As Michael Thomas underneath getting a decent gain. Here is Breeze with a heavy run formation. But there is Harrison like a heat-seeking missile just taking Kamara out on the play. But even though we get all these big hits, it does nothing for reinforcement. But this interception will put Harrison Smith in the zone. My opponent putting his hands in the cookie jar. We jump the flat route and ha or the table route. And Harrison Smith has reinforcement going. So reinforcement, as you guys will see in the description, allows him to be a disruptive force in the run game. Get blocked shit. So we're going to keep Harrison Smith in the box here. See if we can get a stop. But it's actually going to be play action. And even though he had Michael Thomas downfield for a touchdown, he still gets the first down to Jared Cook. I don't know how we folded as a defense of unit completely there but i think everything was open on that play action including michael thomas because i was in a deep blue cover to assignment there brought harrison in the box and you know especially after that sweep the last thing i thought would happen was play action so harrison smith in the zone and out the zone like, i don't know what to tell you guys that reinforcement ability is a pain in the butt to activate and is very hard to maintain like I don't know, man. <laughs> like, that one, I feel like that one could be tweaked a little bit. I feel like we could also tweak our uh, tackling abilities on Alvin Kamara, who just sheds two like it's nothing. So, yeah. All right, there's some abilities that are really cool, but, you know, they need a bit of tweaking to, you know, really feel the effect. Because 10 yards, you could just get in and out of that zone so easily. Because, you know, it's not like an ability that's easy to activate. Getting three tackles for losses or swats. Obviously, the interception you can do, but I don't know, man. Maybe it's because you get the interception, it's easy to take out. I'm not sure. But um, that's up for the debate, I suppose. What I say is not Bible, all right? Don't take my word for, you know, facts. It's just my opinion, all right? So um, I could be completely wrong. A lot of times I am completely wrong. And unfortunately, we're wrong about that defense because Alvin Kamara is just... 
No matter who is running the ball for the Saints, they just fall forward every single time. Like I don't, I don't know what to do about it. He's breaking tackles and falling forward. We had, I believe, it was Latavius Murray absolutely boxed up, and Murray in a revenge game against his former team, the Minnesota Vikings, was able to fall forward. The Saints have a couple of former Vikings. They also have Marcus Sherrills. We have Stephon Diggs, who's been a Viking all of his career, and will continue to be a Viking for the time being. Him and Thielen both on long-term contracts, so this top wide receiver duo will remain intact for Kirk Cousins for the time being. Unfortunately. Thielen not able to make that catch. Von Bell with tight coverage on the corner route. Didn't expect that. Third down and 10. Cousins five wide. Looking for Stefan Diggs. One on one against Patrick Robinson. And Diggs able to outrace the former... Well, he was a former Saint, then he went on the Eagles. I don't know why I always do that, man. I always reaccount where a player used to play for. I don't know why I juke there. Oh, I didn't think he would get stuck on the wide receiver block. I didn't think um, that wide receiver was blocking two people there. Unfortunately for us, he did because it cost us a chance of getting a touchdown there. Now in fourth down the goal, we end up settling for the field goal. And this dude has a very methodical offense and not exactly one that's predicated on running the ball. Mainly because, well, the running game just doesn't really work out for him on first down. You see four rushes for eight yards. So we've got to try to get Harrison Smith in the zone again by trying to get those knockouts, forcing completions. There is one out at three. He for some reason goes back in the flats after Camaro nearly lost his helmet. Harrison doesn't get the big hit there, but still forces the tackle to bring up a fourth down and six. My opponent going for it with a minute 30 left in the first half, and he's got Michael Thomas on the slant. Michael Thomas definitely a guy you do not want to leave one-on-one, -on -one, which we did right there. Gambling with the pressure didn't work for us. Here's Camara out the backfield on the screen pass, and he's going to go out of bounds there conservatively. Uh, I can tell my opponent really just likes checking the ball down. Uh, we got a pick six, and he tried to check it down and we got a big hit on Alvin Kamara when he tried to check it down he still does not dare to throw the ball more than 10 yards downfield if it feels like in any play so we'll try to play to his tendencies the most we can as he goes to the most shallow route on the field once again it's Alvin Kamara and Breeze with only one timeout to work with not going to call it here seven second runoff the clock definitely a factor as he runs the ball with Kamara again and we make the tackle in the open field and that should pretty much force his hands to bring Willie Lutz on the field and he's going to let the clock wind down to three seconds smartly so we can make this the last play of the first half here is Lutz to tie the game the field go up and good so Harrison Smith one out of three on his x-factor um Thielen just I just cannot work on Thielen's double me for some reason it feels like I'm, I'm not making it the primary focus of this offense I'm just kind of trying to play with all the weapons we have unfortunately one of our weapons is not Eli Apple that's gonna be intercepted I didn't think that ball had a chance to be intercepted but Eli with the great undercut there and the Saints now have a chance to take the lead we had a chance to really control the game there unfortunately we've given him quick possession and we just cannot tackle we need at least 12 people to tackle. Unfortunately, there's only 11 on the field. So I don't know how we're going to make any open field tackles on the Saints team. I don't know how we're going to cover Michael Thomas. Didn't do it there properly on third down. The way to make tackles is just get Harrison Smith to launch himself into Kamara. He's the only man to make one-on-one -on -one tackles on this team. Trying to get the big hit right there, but that's not going to work out. Murray with the first down. The Saints at the 15-yard line, and now he's really keeping this ball on the ground, being conservative. But for the most part, we continue to box up this rushing attack. Here, though, Kamara able to get a couple of positive yards. Third down and two. Gotta assume he's running the ball in this situation, and he is. To Washington, and Washington not going to fall forward for the first down. It's going to be fourth down and one and he's keeping the offense on the field he doesn't want the lead with a field goal he wants it with a touchdown one more time gotta assume he's going to run the ball no he's passing breeze with the ball in his hands and breeze is taken down by Kendricks Eric Kendricks forcing the turnover on downs he definitely overthought the situation as Cooks drops an easy first down on the slant like, if he ran the ball like, he's been breaking so many tackles I'm surprised that he tried to pass there and just a couple of slants so yeah, you run hard up like that. Sometimes you just overthink the situation. That's what he did there as we hit the out route to Thielen. Superstar receiver versus superstar corner. And Thielen wins that battle against Lattimore. Here is the bubble screen to Stefan Diggs using the jukebox and using some speed to get away. Lattimore with the tackle, but we've gotten to the 29-yard line, which does put us in field goal range as we're looking to take the lead with any points. And Stefan Diggs is really starting to become an X-factor of this offense as we continue to give it to him short routes underneath and now that my opponent tries to put Lattimore on digs we hit him with Adam Thielen on the out route remember we worked on that out route earlier didn't quite work out for us and that time it works to perfection Adam Thielen giving us a seven 
point lead as Cheryl's calling for the fair catch. Drew Brees and the offense need to go 75 yards to try to get back into this game on this drive. Field goals pretty much do nothing with 314 left. Brees continuing to check it down. He's taking what the defense is giving him, but at some point, we're going to jump one of these routes as you saw try to do it right there, but instead he finds Josh Hill, and he's actually quickly moving here to the 29-yard line. Next play, the pressure forcing the quick throw, and Harry the Hitman has got the interception, his second interception, and it's going to be his second pick six of the game, and what a great time for Harry the Hitman to be alive. One more time, I told you guys, man, he continues to check it down, we're going to make him pay, and that we did, and we actually forced the rage quit here, so even though Harrison's in the zone, we won't see it. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed these Vikings really going at it. Subscribe for more Madden 20 gameplays, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching.